We're now going to begin my favorite part of this whole journey or this process. In fact, the very reason that Chris and I wanted to do this, because it's to get into this deeper level, what we're referring to as the hero's inner journey. It's to go underneath the level of plot and structure and story in a certain sense, at least visible story, to get to not only deeper levels of character, but also the deeper levels of meaning, the richness of the screenplay or the story or the movie that you're creating. Now, I have to begin, though, by giving you a really strong, whatever it is, admonition. And that is this. Stories exist first and foremost on the level of plot. Yes, we are going to go deeper. Yes, we are going to get into what is known as the character's arc and the theme of the story and the meaning of the story. But none of that can happen unless you have this visible journey in place. The deeper levels grow out of that visible level. This is what first and foremost is going to elicit the emotion. This is what's going to draw the audience in. This is what's going to draw the reader in. And this is a very, very difficult thing to internalize, to accept. And the reason it's difficult is because this is not why we go to the movies most of the time, and it's most of the time not the reason you want to write movies. See, I know why you're here. You are here because you want to write movies that not only touch people, but touch them deeply, that say something about the human condition, that reveal something about you, that allow you to get to that universal level, to get to the level that Chris will refer to, or, or Carl Jung or Joseph Campbell as the collective unconscious. When you go see a good movie, you don't come out of the theater saying, oh, I love that movie because I love that an ogre wanted to rescue a princess. Or I love watching them survive the Titanic, or certainly in something that gets even deeper or richer than that. You talk about the characters, you talk about the originality, you talk about the depth. And since that's what we talk about leaving the theater and that's what we strive for as writers and filmmakers, the difficulty is to avoid going there first, meaning to think that you can skip over this level of plot and structure and just get into character richness. And it does not work. It does not work. I say that as an absolute. Certainly there would be exceptions to that. But by and large, and certainly if you're pursuing Hollywood movies, you got to get them in the seats before you can change their lives. And before you can get them in the seats, you got to get your movie made. And you got to get them to read and buy and produce your script. And this is what's going to do that. Then, once you've got this in place, you can go deeper and get to that level of richness and meaning that is what you strive to do and that is going to increase the emotional experience and increase your connection to the audience or to the reader of your screenplay or novel. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. Not just some alternative way of looking at a movie, but the parallel journey and show you how that intertwines with the structure that I already gave you. Now before I can do that, I need to start by just defining what I mean by this inner journey again. See, the outer journey, or what I call, for instance, the plot or the outer motivation of your movie, is this simple. It is a story about a hero who wants to accomplish a clearly defined, visible goal to cross a clearly defined, visible finish line. It is a journey of achievement, I would call it. It is a journey that is designed usually to establish some kind of hierarchy, to be able to say, I won. I did what nobody else could do. I'm the gladiator who killed the emperor. I am the industrialist who saved the Jews in Schindler's List. Because for all its meaning and depth and, and uh, resonance and historical um, uh, fulfillment, you might say, 
Schindler's List is a very simple movie. It's a story about Schindler, a guy who wants to rescue the Jews that work in his factory. That's it. That's the visible finish line, and everything is built around whether he'll accomplish that goal. But the inner journey, the one that's underneath that, is what I call a journey of fulfillment. It is the character arc from, you might say, from protection to courage, from fear to courage. It is from being unevolved to being evolved, to being fully realized. I like the Jungian term, to be fully individuated, meaning fully defining yourself as an individual, as opposed to being defined by others. The heroes of movies are very often at the beginning defined by other people or by situation, by their parents, by their job, by the beliefs they've always carried about themselves. In the end of the movie, they stand up and say, no, this is who I am. It's not what you said I was. It's not who I've always thought myself to be. I define myself. I am complete and unique as an individual. And that's what that character arc is. And it runs underneath that. Now, the conflict in the visible journey, the obstacles that seem impossible to overcome, are visible obstacles. Okay? They're a moat of lava. It's a fire-breathing dragon. It is Lord Farquaad who wants to stop him from taking the princess away in the end of the movie. It is the very essence of the journey. It's at the beginning, the obstacle is just those fairy tale creatures who are swarming around infesting his swamp, in his opinion. There are visible things. It's the villain. It's the bad guy. It's the iceberg. It's the alien invasion. It's the magical powers of the lost ark itself that's going to keep them from, from retrieving it. It's all visible obstacle, but on the inner journey of the character, the one that runs underneath that visible level, the conflict and the obstacles come from within the hero. Now, I'm going to explain all this in more detail in just a second, but one other reason I love this part of it is because it should become so clear, and I want you to think always on these two levels as I'm discussing this, that I'm also talking about real life. I will often use the word, we do this, or you do this, because the characters in movies are mirroring what we all do in terms of the own obstacles we face or create for ourselves and what keeps us from achieving our own destiny, our own fulfillment, our own individuation. <laughs>